Hello everyone, today I'm gonna to switch it up a little bit and talk about a condition where a celebrity has developed a condition and in my practice, patients are asking me about this condition as well as people in the community. So I want to educate about this condition. Well, one of my favorite singers, piano man, Billy Joel, is someone who I grew up with, someone who I saw in concert this year, I had to cancel his tour this year because of a condition called NPH, which is normal pressure hydrocephalus. And it is very important as a neurologist, as a neurosurgeon, and as a physician, and even in the community to understand that this condition, if caught early, is reversible. And when it comes to dementia, where you can have a cognitive decline due to different conditions, this is one of them that you really don't want to miss because it's reversible. And there are some subtleties in the beginning of the diagnosis that we can see. So Billy Joel is about 76 years old, and this is a condition you see usually in the elderly. So when an elderly person comes into my office with cognitive symptoms, through the examination history, I am looking for a condition such as MPH because that's a very important, and I'll tell you why. MPH is a condition called normal pressure hydrocephalus. And the word normal pressure means that there's normal pressure and hydrocephalus literally means water on the brain. So even as the brain expands, so if you took a balloon and blew up the balloon, even though the balloon is expanding, right? It's not all the way expanded, the compliance where there is normal pressure at that level. So over time, there's expansion of the brain. Now it's not the brain itself, it's the ventricular system of the brain. So let's talk about what that means, your ventricular system of the brain. Well, you have cerebrospinal fluid, which is clear, watery, that cushions the brain, and it delivers nutrients and removes waste. It's this built-in plumbing system that is extremely important. And the system starts off with these interconnected chambers called the lateral ventricle. So you have them on both sides and they are connected. And then the spinal fluid goes into a third ventricle and fourth ventricle. If there's an obstruction like within the system itself, then that can cause hydrocephalus and a ballooning and that can cause high pressure system. This is a little bit different in normal pressure hydrocephalus. This is more the reabsorption of the spinal fluid. You have what we call these arachnoid granulations that are, are along the brain. And these areas are the granulations actually reabsorb spinal fluid. When there is damage damage to it or through aging process, these granulations don't reabsorb the spinal fluid, so the spinal fluid accumulates. And when it accumulates in these chambers called the lateral ventricles, then it starts expanding. So there's this slow buildup of expansion and there's stretching and it could be usually months to years. And even though you have the stretching over time, you can get peaks of increased pressure, but over time itself, the stretching causes stretching of areas of the brain and the structures along the ventricular system. So what is the symptoms of normal pressure hydrocephalus? So now you heard me talk about normal pressure hydrocephalus. What are the symptoms? One of the symptoms that we see is called gait apraxia. So the word gait apraxia is really the inability to walk and the gait is magnetic. So the feet are stuck to the ground. So it's almost like forgetting how you walk. If I examine a patient, and they have normal motor strength and they have normal motor coordination and then you have them get up and walk, their feet are stuck to the ground because the brain and the legs are disconnected. And the reason is because when you have the ventricular system expanding, it starts to interact with the fibers that control gait. So it's called gait apraxia. It's almost the inability to walk. It's a very, very important thing to watch. Now, patients with dementia, with Alzheimer's dementia can have difficulty learning how to walk. It's usually at the level of the end stages of Alzheimer's. So this is picked up very early in this condition. The second is dementia, cognitive difficulties. Usually it's forgetfulness, it's memory loss, there's some subtleties, but again, it's a little different than Alzheimer's, which has more cognitive behavioral symptoms. Uh, this has the combination of memory loss with gait apraxia. And the third one is urinary continence. It's the inability to control the urine, but it's more the acknowledgement of controlling the urine. So not the ability to get to the bathroom, but not knowing that you have to urinate. So you lose bladder control. So the triad of gait apraxia, urinary continence, and dementia, when you see those three things, normal pressure hydrocephalus needs to be evaluated. And how do we do that? We do certain tests. CT of the brain is a scan that can be done, but a better test is an MRI of the brain because in the MRI of the brain, you see the ventricles expanding and that's called ventriculomegaly. Megaly is enlargement and expansion of the ventricular system that we talked about that has the spinal fluid. And as it expands, it starts to affect the structures of the brain, particularly gait, 
urinary continence, and cognitive function. Why pressure is normal and normal pressure hydrocephalus, the tissue stretches the compliance, so the compliance changes. But if you really measure and you had a measurement tool, there are peaks where the pressure will increase over time and you can pick that up. But overall, this is categorized as a normal pressure hydrocephalus. How do we diagnose MPH also? There's a couple studies that we can do. One is a spinal fluid analysis where we actually take a lumbar puncture needle, place it in the L4-5 or interspace, and we take fluid out. It's a spinal tap or a lumbar puncture. And when we take fluid out, we take approximately 30 to about 50 cc's of fluid. As we take the fluid out, we're removing all of that fluid. And what we do is we take the fluid, besides analyzing for other causes of dementia, we have the patient walk. If the patient's walking improves, that's a good clinical sign that the patient has MPH. Another study that you can do is a nuclear medicine study, which you inject a tracer, and it's called a cisternogram, and you measure one at baseline, then you measure 24 hours, 48 hours, and if the tracer still accumulates inside those spaces, then that's consistent with normal pressure hydrocephalus. So what's the treatment for normal pressure hydrocephalus? So you're going through all of this now. A patient comes in, has features of it, how do we treat it, and why is it reversible? Well, this is where you get neurosurgery involved because the treatment is a ventriculoperitoneal shunt. It's a small tube placed surgically that drains the spinal fluid uh, and the ventricle system into the abdomen where it absorbs it. So see in this picture here, you can see here clearly that the ventricular peritoneal shunt is placed in the lateral ventricle and then it's drained into the abdomen. Remember, even though the average pressure is normal, the shunt works because it prevents those small harmful spikes in pressure and relieves that constant stretching of the brain tissue. So. That's one of the takeaways here, MPH is one of the most important diagnoses I see in my practice for dementia because it's reversible. When a patient comes in and I see that they have this magnetic gate where the feet are stuck to the ground, they have memory loss, and they have difficulty urine, controlling urine, MPH is high on my differential diagnosis. Now, you can have MPH with the gait abnormalities without the memory loss and the urinary incontinence. If you see all three, then that is a big indication that this is NPH. And the faster you diagnose this condition, the more reversible it is. I hope Billy Joel gets the care he needs. I hopefully he'll have a full recovery. I don't know as far as what he decided to do as far as shunt placement, uh, but this is so important as far as a teaching tool to teach my patients and all of you that MPH is a reversible cause of dementia.